Uh, I want to bring in now Tom Fitton from Judicial Watch. The reason that Judicial Watch has become one of the major institutions on the right is because of the tenacity and grit of, uh, of uh, Tom Fitton and uh, just a, a tremendous leader uh, on, the, uh, on the conservative movement. And he's been on this uh, whole thing about getting the numbers right and all that. And he and I have been talking the last couple of days. Tom, wanted to have you on for our audience and, and to give your unexpurgated opinion about where we stand here and what's got to happen about the metrics and the numbers and what the White House has to be coming forward with. Well, the first, the first lesson we know at Judicial Watch is don't trust the bureaucracies. Uh, the bureaucracies didn't want to do much on coronavirus. There were a few voices warning that we needed to take significant steps, and the president heeded them. And so in reaction, the bureaucracies go overboard and want to destroy the country's economy in order to cure the pandemic, which is a wild experiment that has no basis in science or reality. And I'm not against using models. I'm not against trying to estimate where problems will arise and deploying resources adequately. Uh, but right now, we're not doing any of that. We have just indiscriminately and for a lengthy period of time shut down people, keep people in their homes, and destroy businesses without any bait, without any fair foundation. And we were told last week, Steve, that 100,000 people at least would die with mitigation. So it assumed the shutdowns would result and would still result in 100,000 people dying. Now the latest numbers are around $60,000. 60,000 names, showing that Dr. Fauci, his initial analysis last month was right, that this will be like a severe flu crisis. Now, it was, it's worse than the flu in that you don't want to get it and the complications from it can be lifelong. But in the end, we've got it. It can't be that we close the country down to solve a pandemic. The president should reorient and refocus his team on getting the country open gaining access to treatments and preventatives. India, for instance, has allowed the use of hydrochloroquine as a preventative for frontline healthcare worker, workers and uh, family household members of those who have uh, coronavirus. Why aren't we focused on that? The president's leadership here has always been key. And, I, I, and, and on a positive note, uh, when all is said and is done, he, he will be responsible single-handedly because of his leadership on this drug, for saving countless American lives and probably lives worldwide by highlighting the potential efficacy of this drug. What do you think ought to happen uh, right now? Since we're in the middle of this thing, and you see, you're absolutely correct. You heard this is what we're hammering on Dr. Burks and others talking about the, the underlying assumption in this model still from Dr. Murray in Washington is that uh, there's, there's another mitigation period of a basically a lockdown all the month of May, and this really comes up for, for discussion at the end of May, the beginning of June. What would you recommend for the White House briefings for Dr. Mur uh, for Dr. Fauci, for Dr. Burks, and, and what course of action do you think ought to be taken right now? Uh, in terms of reemphasizing and reor uh, re reorienting the task force, they need to start modeling the destruction to the economy, the destruction to our health care system as a result of this shutdown, because we, it's like the whole patient approach. The whole patient needs to be treated here, and you can't destroy the health care system in order to save lives, which is now what this current economic shutdown is doing because hospital practice, hospitals are laying off workers, doctors are losing their practices and having, a, and, and to, having to throw out staff. People can't get elective medical treatment, and as you know, elective is a mighty elastic word. So the damage here is terrible to the health care system, and we're not hearing that from the voices we're seeing at the White House press conference. I think Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks are doing their darndest to try to save lives. But they have a particular point of view, and the numbers they've been relying upon, however much in good faith, have turned out to be phantom numbers. The goalposts aren't moving. They they're never were there to begin with because they've been changed almost hourly, and you see it happening on the podiums. The president's not... The president got a, his instincts are right on this, and he needs to have the team around him reflect his instincts, and they're not. Tom, how did people get? Uh, how do they get more access to you? Twitter handle? Uh, how do they find out more about Judicial Watch? I know you've become one of the most prominent uh, institutions over the last couple of years from a very small start. But how do people get more access to you? 
Well, they can go to our website at judicialwatch.org and that Tom Fitton and at Judicial Watch. And, and just quickly, the next battle is saving our elections from the coronavirus excuse, uh, you know, from uh, being undermined you, by the left using coronavirus as a pretext to throw out voter ID laws in 35 states. This is this is the clear present danger to our system uh, that the president should be spend as much time emphasizing. Again, his instincts are to emphasize it and talk about it, uh, but his team isn't focused on it either. You, you're talking about uh, before we go. You're talking about also this uh, vote by mail, and you know we have a 30-day election period in uh, in October that leads up to November, but it's not a it's not a single day vote. It's where you do just a national. A uh, mail-in ballot and, and and maybe even electronic voting. Vote by mail would would means no voter ID. When they say vote by mail, that means no voter ID, and it also means ballot harvesting, where you can have third parties collecting ballots uh, without virtually any check, uh, which is an re- open invitation for voter fraud. So if you want to figure out how to steal an election, you want to set up the system the left is recommending. Vote by mail, no voter ID, ballot harvesting, and elections that occur over the course of months rather than on a particular day. Tom Fitton, uh, what's your Twitter handle again? Because I know you lighten people up. You're owning the libs all day long on your on your Twitter feed. What, what's your Twitter handle? It's at Tom Fitton, at Tom Fitton, and, uh, you know, at Judicial Watch as well. Uh, and of course, Steve, you know, we're not just talking about it. We've got the Freedom of Information Act request. So yeah. these questions aren't idle. We're following up and we're prepared to go to court to get information from the deep state bureaucracy uh, that uh, destroyed our economy, in my view, needlessly for the last month. And, and the president should also emphasize, Steve, the CDC didn't mandate this. And you look at the get- guidelines, they say to do what I'm do- say that we should be doing. Severe community threat, maybe you shut down schools, maybe you do X, Y, and Z. None of it suggests a statewide shutdown of everything in response to uh, any, any coronavirus cases in your state. This is, this is insanity. We're, we're committing economic suicide with little basis in science or now we know in reality given the numbers. How did the, but how did the coronavirus task force come up with this initial recommendation then, which is basically 30 days ago? How do you think they came up with the recommendation to, to back basically to back governors that were going to do this? Uh, they took the various. Well, we don't know. Well, that's one of the good questions you asked, Steve, because we don't know. Uh, they looked at various models and they came out with charts to uh, the media last week, and there's really no nothing much beyond that. And since then, one question on it, uh, the, everything starts getting um, vague and incoherent. Uh, the, the president's press conferences have been a highlight in terms of transparency. The weak spots have been the discussions of, by his experts of the numbers and the basis for them and the reasons and, and, the, and how we can rely on them to do specific things. And, and, and it, it all just collapses upon even uh, surface questioning. It's He's really concerning, right. and this is why to, he should the, the ditch key thing the model of this, what and said. focus on opening up the darn country. Yeah, and, and, but, but get a set of metrics that we can look at now that drive, that a, certain action, what these actions are going to drive to this measure. Fitton brings up the key point we've been trying to emphasize. The 100,000 of the 240, the spread, the 100,000 assumed you were doing these actions. To have the thing drop from 88 now to 68 or 60, that's where you guys start questioning, hey, what exactly are we doing to jump in? It assumes that we're doing it through the end of May, beginning of June. That's the key. And we're, and yes, 100%. That's what Murray's told us. So, Tom, thank you very much. Well, By the way, the on data, my 30 but, days. But the metrics are collecting the data. We should be, as you point out, we should be testing or even just collecting the data of hospitalizations and deaths and ICDU needs. That, that helps you model it. But the idea that these models that look out into the future – They've already been shown to be um, wa- off by, fa- by, by factors of three to four to six. You know, th- look, when they told us 100,000 deaths with mitigation, everyone in Washington, anyone sensible should have screamed and said, what are you telling us? That we're doing all of this and we're still going to be 30 to 60 times worse than China's reported deaths? Let's say China's deaths were double. 
we would have been double what happened in China. That obviously didn't make sense. And in my view is that the president wanted to reopen the country back up. His public health officials advising him disagreed, I think probably for good reasons and maybe on good faith basis. But I, I, I think the president's instincts were right. And so in order to convince him to do this, they used numbers that if public would corner him into uh, pushing for a continued shutdown. And I think he should just push back and say, this is we've, we've tried this. The country's dying. We've got to get it resurrected. And that means you've got to, I think, come forward with, hey, what is your model and what's the plan off that model? If it's going to be the end of April, let's see that. And let's see what the outcomes you're driving to. And what are the we, assumptions? We can't wait That's for the, the end 100%. of April. That's 30 to 40 million people out of work at the end of April. Uh, this should have been oh, done hey, last hey. week, and this is why we could be yelling about it. Yes. You should be yelling about it every day. We need to open. Which governor is going to take the lead, for instance, in opening their state back up? Because the model Tom, we got to bounce. We got to bounce a hard break. We'll be b right back with Warren Pandemic.